So we started this new series of videos called Why Was Blank Game a Big Deal? We did it with Crisis. It was really just a focus on highlighting gaming gems from the early to mid 2000s. And for some reason, when coming up with a list of games, we all immediately jumped to Freedom Fighters. So while it may not have been a big deal for the entire world of gaming, we know it was definitely a big deal for a group of fans. Count us in that group. Let's talk about this awesome game, shall we? When Freedom Fighters was first announced in 2002, it was officially titled Freedom, the Battle of Liberty Island, and it had a focus on turn-based strategic combat. It gained a bunch of attention because it was from EA, and more importantly, IO Interactive, the guys behind the Hitman series. Just coming off of Hitman 2, they were the coolest kids on the block. Now during development, the game Freedom's focus morphed into more of an action third-person shooter and then was simply titled Freedom Fighters when it released in 2003 for PS2, the original Xbox, GameCube, and PC. Now for perspective, when the game released, it saw a fairly decent critical response. Its Metacritic score was in the 80s across all platforms. Not that a Metacritic score always matters, but most of us look back fondly on the game itself and are still holding out for some sort of sequel one day. The game centers around you, the player, Chris Stone, a New York City plumber on the job with his brother, Troy. They're basically just Italian New York plumbers in a video game, and while they don't quite live up to Mario and Luigi, they still end up pretty cool and end up shooting a bunch of dudes because in this world, Russia actually won World War II and became a dominant force in most of the world, with the US being one of the last holdouts. Now while on the plumbing job, Russian forces bust in, invade New York City, and then one thing leads to another, and you get wrapped up with a team of resistance fighters hiding out in the sewers, and it's up to you to rally the people, shoot a lot of bad guys, raise the American flag, and save the day and liberate New York. New York. The game received a lot of praise for its team AI, which made working with a team feel really good, if simple, something that's really important for a game like this, especially on a controller. It was pretty easy to handle. You level up your charisma, which allowed you to command more troops at once, starting with just one or two dudes and later having entire mobs and posses. It's controlled fairly simple with a go here or a defend or a regroup, but their effectiveness made them really feel key. Sure, the AI hasn't really aged well at all. Sometimes they stand around, but it was still all workmanlike like because they can rush a room and wipe out dudes. You still feel 10 times more lethal as part of a group, not just as a lone hero gunning down hallways of soldiers. The game kind of starts that way with you and another guy shooting people, but then it morphs way more into a team effort and you have to use that team to survive. Seeing as how the game is based around you being a regular dude taking down an occupying force, the team mechanic needed to be that strong while easy to use, and it was. They nailed it. And then of course there was the awesome split screen multiplayer that you could play with a friend, you could both team up and build your your own little armies. But when I was making this video to record footage, I couldn't actually find any friends to play with. Eh. But it was really the smaller systems and light touches here and there that made the game seem special. The visuals around the game are based around seasons. You start in the summer, early fall, when Russia invades, and by the time you're a hardened freedom fighter, you're blazing your biggest battles in the dead of a really harsh New York winter. And plus, by the end of the game, you look 10 times more badass as you more increasingly become this freedom rebel leader. And as your resistance becomes stronger, the sewer system base you hide out in becomes more and more filled with tents, people, rough structures, stockpiled ammo, and besides Besides some added gameplay elements here and there, you really visually get to see the resistance build, and all the while just seeing the above ground New York City fall increasingly to Soviet rule, breaking down and becoming more of a war zone each day. Now all those touches and interesting cues are a lot going on for a PS2 game. Now I said people want a sequel because once the game really starts going, it ends, and just kind of leaves you wanting way more. It was good, it was really fun, gorgeous, with an incredible and really epic memorable score by the now pretty legendary game composer Jesper Kidd. But it just seemed like the game fell just short of greatness, and a sequel could have really capitalized on that. Sadly, it seems like it might not ever happen. But that's almost why it's a big deal and why we wanted to talk about it, because Freedom Fighters is just a solid game. It didn't revolutionize a genre, or change the video game industry, or introduce anything extremely new. It's just a good experience in an era of gaming and gameplay that is very different from today's. And so many people really look back fondly on that, and I think it's worth commending. Whenever we've tweeted about it, or mentioned it, or I talk to anyone in person, so many people seemingly come out of hiding to be like, hey, I remember that game. That game was awesome. It's always a weirdly specific game like that that brings us together and everyone seems to know about it and that's special. Because a year after the game's launch, Eidos did reveal that they had plans for a sequel and that it was supposed to come out a year later in 2005. But shortly after that, Kane and Lynch went into development, which was, you know, Kane and Lynch. It started to eat up IO Interactive's time, leaving a Freedom Fighter sequel kind of thrown on the back burner seemingly forever. Kane and Lynch didn't release to the best reception. Then when we got a sequel to that super okay game and 
not a Freedom Fighter sequel, and that's when you start to think, okay, well, maybe I guess this isn't happening. If you don't remember, in 2009, Eidos Interactive was purchased by Square Enix, which means that IO was now under the Square Enix umbrella as well. Two years after Square Enix gained control of Eidos Interactive, the official IO Interactive tweeted out that a Freedom Fighter sequel was, and I quote, definitely something a lot of us are interested in doing. Now we all freaked out, oh my god, holy shit, maybe we're gonna get another Freedom Fighters 2, the dream lives on. And then two years later, in 2013, Square Enix had some financial trouble, which led to the publisher cutting employees. Because of these financial troubles, Square Enix decided that IO Interactive would only work on the next Hitman game, and would no longer be working on sequels to their other games, which included Kane and Lynch and Freedom Fighters. This killed that little bit of hope that we got from IO's tweet two years earlier, and it seemed like the dream was dead. IO went on to release a new Hitman game in 2016, which I will have to say was really freaking awesome and loved by pretty Pretty much everyone. It reviewed super well, and its episodic approach to the series was different, but a great take on the classic series. But even though the game reviewed super well, Square Enix still decided to drop IO Interactive in May of 2017. IO Interactive managed to work out a management buyout with Square Enix, and as of now is an independent studio. Unfortunately, during the split, IO wasn't able to keep the rights to all their IPs, but they did manage to retain the rights to both Hitman and, wait for it, Freedom Fighters. So, being an independent studio without having a parent company breathing down their neck, they now have the ability to do whatever they want and make whatever game they want to make. And although they have announced that they are working on a follow-up to Hitman, I think it's safe to say that there is hope again, maybe, for a Freedom Fighter sequel. Like we said earlier, they did show interest in making one more recently than not, and maybe now, being an independent studio that can do more of whatever they want, they may actually plan to start making on a sequel. I, I don't know. Who knows? That's speculation. They have a small amount of original IP, you know, they may decide creatively that they just want to make something entirely new, and good for them. But we do really hope there's a world with more Freedom Fighters in it. If not, the original is still a big deal to us. So I ask you now to take up arms against the evil invaders and yell in their faces that they will never take our freedom! Freedom! That's why we wanted to talk about Freedom Fighters, that's why it's a big deal to us, but we want to hear from you guys down in the comments. Were you down with Freedom Fighters back in the day? Did you play any of the split screen multiplayer? Did you like the story? Let's talk about anything about this game and hope for a sequel, what you would want to see in a Freedom Fighters 2, down in the comments. I'll be down there talking to you guys, but if you got anything else for me, be sure to hit me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, at Jake Baldino as well. But as you probably know, clicking the like button does help us out. It shows us that you like this video and maybe want to see more Freedom Fighters videos. But subscribing if you're new is a good idea because we put out stuff like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.